Imagine a time when media empires were built with ink, not tweets. Meet George Hurst, the miner who struck gold in California, and his son William, a media pioneer. How did they turn ink into billions? Discover the next Hearst generation facing kidnapping scandals and legal battles. How did they navigate challenges like the Great Depression? What role did visionary Phoebe Hearst play in shaping their legacy? Jump to the 21st century with William Randolph Hearst III leading the family through digital challenges. How does a media giant like the Hearst Corporation stay relevant in the digital age? How do they balance fashion, acting, and blogging in today's world? What lessons can we learn from their enduring legacy? How does the family adapt to the ever-changing media landscape? In a world where every other social media star claims a billion-dollar status, it's time to rewind to a different era where making that coveted first billion was no walk in the park. This family, the pioneers of the media billionaireship, faced a game with rules unlike today's Instagram fame. From the start, the world's first billion-dollar media family, the Hearsts, stepped into controversy. Imagine a film created to mock their billionaire patriarch, William Randolph Hearst. Fast forward a few decades, and a family member finds themselves imprisoned after developing Stockholm Syndrome during a political kidnapping. Had a near loss of a multi-billion dollar empire in a custody battle sparked by a dramatic divorce, yet the Hearst family's coffers have not just stayed afloat, but brimmed over the centuries. With over $30 billion in their treasure chest as of 2023, the Hearst family stands as the original media billionaires. The Hearsts are a family whose roots trace back to Irish soil. It all began in 1766 in South Carolina, way before Silicon Valley's tech empires or Hollywood's cinematic glamour even crossed anyone's mind. Meet George, the patriarch with mining savvy who could outshine any venture capitalist. In the mid-19th century, George Hearst, leaving behind a humble Missouri farm, chased the gleam of California's gold rush. While immediate riches eluded him, he struck gold, quite literally, with the home state mine in South Dakota. But George wasn't just a miner, he was a gambler who won the San Francisco Examiner in a bet, venturing into publishing to champion democratic causes. His wife, Phoebe Apperson Hearst, added vision to the family legacy. From a school teacher to a philanthropist, she left her mark with scholarships, an architectural competition, and the Phoebe Hearst Museum of Anthropology. Their son, William Randolph Hearst, destined for greatness, had a colorful stint at Harvard, known for antics like sending chamber pots with professional likenesses. In 1887, he took the reins of the Examiner, turning it into a media empire with pioneering yellow journalism. The establishment of King Feature Syndicate broadened the Hearst name across comics, editorials, and more. Just when you thought William had reached his peak, a new chapter unfolded. As the dynamic 1920s unfolded, William Randolph Hearst, a media tycoon driven by an insatiable appetite for expansion, embarked on a new frontier beyond the realm of newspapers. While already commanding the nation's largest newspaper chain, Hearst's vision extended to a world of glossy magazines. His initial foray into this domain was none other than Cosmopolitan, a publication with a storied history dating back to 1886. Originally a family-oriented read, Cosmo underwent several transformations before landing in Hearst's hands in 1905. Evolving into a women's magazine, it found its stride with a captivating mix of short fiction, coverage of public affairs, and profiles of celebrities. By 1940, Cosmopolitan had solidified its place as a household name, boasting an impressive readership of 2 million. But Hearst's ambitions didn't stop there. In 1911, he added another jewel to his media crown by acquiring good housekeeping. Tailored to American homemakers, this magazine became a showcase for Hearst's Midas Touch. It skillfully blended a diverse array of content, ranging from women's interests and health tips to culinary delights and consumer reports. Through these ventures, William Randolph Hearst not only shaped the media landscape, but also left an indelible mark on the way Americans consumed and interacted with printed content during the vibrant era of the 1920s. 
By the 1920s, subscription numbers for Hearst magazine soared past 1 million, undeterred even by the challenging Great Depression years. As the 1930s dawned, Hearst ambitions expanded to radio waves and silver screens. His empire grew to include 28 newspapers, radio stations, a film studio, a wire service, and a bouquet of 13 magazines. Not to mention his silver screen ventures, producing films featuring the leading lady, Marianne Davis, who was more than just an actress, she was his lover for over three decades. However, even titans tumble, and the Great Depression took a toll on Hearst's once impervious wealth and influence. Shifting political allegiances strained his relationship with President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The most significant blow to Hearst's ego came in 1941 with the release of Orson Welles' cinematic critique, Citizen Kane. Deploying an army of Hollywood executives and loyal journalists, Hearst attempted, albeit largely successfully, to quash the film, even involving the FBI, treating it as a matter of national security. Meanwhile, the iconic Hearst Castle in California, a symbol of his larger-than-life persona, stood amidst opulent gardens. Designed with architect Julia Morgan over 28 years, it wasn't just a residence, but a gathering place for Hollywood's elite, politicians, and sports figures. As the curtain closed on William Randolph Hearst Sr.'s life in 1951, the prologue to another tale began. The sequel to the family's legacy was secretly rehearsed by his sons, the next generation of the Hearst family, ready to expand the empire into new territories. The script for their story was being written, a continuation that even their illustrious father couldn't have foreseen. William Randolph Hearst Sr. not only mastered a media empire, but also fathered five sons, George, William Jr., John, and the twins, Randolph and David. Each son enthusiastically jumped into the family's inkwell and piggy bank. William Jr., born in 1908, emerged as a prize-winning artist, embodying the family's commitment to both enterprise and journalistic integrity. David Hurst, born in 1915, wasn't a lightweight either. Starting as a beat reporter for the New York Journal American in 1936, he navigated various roles, eventually becoming the publisher of the Los Angeles Herald Express in 1950. His son, David Jr., now holds a significant role in the Hearst Corporation, overseeing newspapers, magazines, and stakes in cable networks like ESPN and A&E. Adding a twist to the family saga, Patricia Campbell Hearst, an extended family member, entered the scene. Kidnapped in 1974 by the Symbionese Liberation Army, a radical left-wing group, her story took an unexpected turn. Instead of remaining a victim, she became an accomplice in criminal activities like robbery and extortion. After facing trial in 1976 and being convicted on charges of bank robbery and illegal use of firearms, her seven-year sentence was later commuted by President Jimmy Carter in 1979. Moving into the transformative 1980s for the Hearst Corporation, a strategic shift toward the booming cable television industry led to collaborations and ventures like the Arts and Entertainment Network and Lifetime. The family's journey took unexpected turns, lending media prowess with personal challenges. Yet, as the Hearst Corporation stepped on recalibration, tensions bubbled within the family. The saga reached its peak, with William Randolph Hearst III filing a lawsuit against the 1999 merger of Hearst television stations with Argyle Television, revealing discord among family members about the company's future. Entering the 1990s, the Hearst Corporation expanded its cable TV influence, acquiring a 20% stake in ESPN and investing in French television production and distribution firms linked with Canal+. Plus. By the late 90s, the company transformed into one of the nation's largest independently owned broadcasting groups. As the 20th century closed, the Hearst Corporation wielded influence like an 800-pound gorilla in the media conglomerate room, with a broadcast empire touching nearly one-fifth of American homes. However, the new millennium ushered in the digital age, posing both challenges and unprecedented opportunities. William Randolph Hearst III, an Harvard-educated math whiz, emerged as a key player. With decades of corporate ascent, he donned multiple hats, editor and publisher of the San Francisco Examiner, director and philanthropic trustee. 
Essentially, he became the de facto patriarch. Meanwhile, his cousin, George Randolph Hearst Jr., conducted the Hearst Corporation's board like a symphony conductor until his 2012 departure, leaving a harmonious family enterprise behind. Then there's John Randolph Bunky Hearst Jr., the favorite grandchild of William Randolph Hearst, adding a touch of controversy to the Hearst family saga. In the colorful escapades of Bunky, life included not just adventurous pursuits like race car driving and editorial ventures, but also a tumultuous journey through two divorces. However, the darker chapter unfolded when his marriage to Barbara cascaded into a legal scrimmage, shaking the gilded corridors of the Hearst family. Barbara, seeking a divorce, levied accusations from abandonment to inhumane treatment, leading to a courtroom drama. In 2006, legal acrobatics took center stage when Bunky's counsel devised a cunning plan, suing Barbara for fraud. If proven, she would have to return her assets. Though the spotlight momentarily veered towards Hearst Corporation's confidential ledger, Bunky withdrew his claims, ending the legal tempest, but not before exposing uncomfortable family and corporate financial details. On the more spiritual side of the family, Victoria Hearst, an evangelical outlier, adds an ideological spice to the family tableau. Her convictions starkly contrast the family's conventional views, becoming fodder for stories on family dynamics. Philanthropy is another family forte, evident in their involvement in the Pocantico Declaration of 1999, where the Hearst pledged their assets for public welfare. As the 21st century dawned, the Hearst Corporation grappled with the digital revolution. In 2000, balancing a print legacy with the internet age, strategic acquisitions and digital overhauls were made. Eight years into this digital shift, the 2008 financial meltdown brought another plot twist. The Hearst Corporation, with a well-balanced portfolio and multiple income channels, navigated the market fluctuations more like a manageable seesaw. Yet, as the family seemingly steered the Hearst ship into placid waters, the winds of change were about to pick up. In 2012, the corridors of the Hearst Corporation felt a seismic shift as the figurative family baton passed hands with the passing of the venerable George Randolph Hearst Jr., board chairman and patriarch in every sense. In this captivating narrative, a previously unsung hero takes center stage. Enter Stephen R. Schwartz. Much like an experienced actor stealing the show, Swartz, formerly the chief operating officer, steps into the spotlight, assuming pivotal roles as president and CEO in 2013. With a wealth of two decades of experience, he deftly guides the media empire through a landscape marked not only by growth, but also by a flourishing tapestry of innovative diversification. Now let's zoom in on the pivotal year of 2015, a turning point where Hearst ventures boldly into the realm of real estate with the ambitious 5M project. Picture a transformative four-acre endeavor in downtown San Francisco, a collaborative masterpiece with Forest City Realty Trust. This venture results in a dazzling office tower and a 288-unit apartment building, a testament to the family's vision and commitment to shaping urban landscapes. Another noteworthy move involves the iconic Herald Examiner building, transformed into a vibrant hub for creative offices, artisanal coffee, and bustling commerce, a strategic metamorphosis brought to life through a partnership with the Georgetown Company. Fast forward to the dynamic landscape of the 2020s, where the Hearst family's influence extends its tendrils into diverse and captivating realms. Enter Lydia Marie Hearst Shaw and Gillian Hearst Shore, descendants of the original media magnate William Randolph Hearst. Far from being mere symbolic figures, these vibrant individuals actively contribute to the ongoing family legacy. Lydia, a great-granddaughter, effortlessly wears multiple hats as a fashion model, actress, and lifestyle blogger. Witness her fashion line, Lydia Hearst for Plumber, standing as a testament to her ability to resonate with a new generation of style enthusiasts. Meanwhile, Jillian, embodying the essence of a modern Renaissance woman, gracefully balances the responsibilities of single motherhood and socialite status, weaving her own narrative within the digital realm. Moving beyond the facade of mere purveyors of newsprint and pixels, Hearst Corporation emerges as a formidable entity in the global media landscape. Guided by William R. Hearst III, the family business has cultivated an impressive portfolio, ranging from the influential ESPN to various financial information services, with a family fortune that comfortably hovers around the $30 billion mark.
As the world's first billion-dollar media dynasty, the Hearst family narrative unfolds as a tale of evolution, resilience, and triumph in the face of ever-changing landscapes and challenges. The legacy continues, a living testament to the family's ability to adapt, innovate, and thrive across generations. So what are your views on this? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And for more such amazing videos, subscribe to our channel.